According to some of our metrics, Honda is one of the most searched for brands on motodeal.com.ph with inquiry after inquiry day in and day out. And the model that we have here made it to the top 40 list out of the hundreds of bikes that we have on the site. In the year 2020, it's proudly Philippine made. This is the Honda Beat 110 Street Standard on Beyond the Ride. is powered by a 110cc single overhead camshaft air-cooled single-cylinder engine equipped with Honda's enhanced smart power technology and programmed fuel injection. It is capable of churning out a whopping 8.7 horsepower at 7,500 rpm and 9.21 newton meters of torque at 6,000 rpm. Made it to Honda's V-Matic automatic transmission, which is denoted in its model name by the capitalized A and T. The suspension is a telescopic fork setup up front with a monoshock unit swing at the back. Yes, it has a single-sided swing arm. You get discs up front and a drum brake at the rear. However, there is no ABS on this model. The tank holds 4 liters of fuel, which doesn't seem like a lot. But with the rider weight, me, at 70 kilograms, the fuel consumption is pretty good. More on that in a bit. Technology in the Beat is pretty on par for its class. On this standard model, you get an analog speedometer and a digital trip computer and fuel gauge. You also get a very quiet electric starter, which is dubbed the Alternating Current Generator or ACG by Honda, and even an eco indicator to help you get the most out of those four liters worth of fuel. It is a scooter, so you do have some decent storage space. You have these pockets up front, this one's pretty shallow. I wouldn't put anything valuable here. Maybe some loose change. On the other side, it's pretty deep. You can put your phone and a bottle. Underneath the seat, which you open like so. Yeah, you gotta just jam it there sometimes. You have 11 liters of storage space. Just looking at it, I know my helmet won't fit, but let's try it anyway. No, it doesn't work. Nope, 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 well, you get the picture. It's not meant for a helmet, whether it's for you or your pillion or whatever. But it is big enough for some tools, some rain gear, extra clothes, other things that you need to carry around with you. Up here is a place for the manual and the other important documents that you need. And of course, this is the gas cap. So you need to access your fuel tank. It's got a rear grab rail with pretty good quality. A Kickstarter right behind the rear foot pegs for the pillion. Now, the seat height is 740 millimeters. The ground clearance is 149 millimeters. I am five foot six. I am completely flat foot on the ground. The riding position is, well, pretty neutral. It's about a 90 degree angle right about here. Uh, you can't stretch out your legs like on the PCX or in, on the Honda ADV150, which gives you that nice relaxed feel. But it's an entry-level scooter. What can you expect? I do like the look of the 14-inch cast wheels this thing comes with. And to top it all off, it's on tubeless tires that are 80 by 90 in the front and 90 by 90 in the rear. So let's talk about the aesthetics. If you think you've seen this before, guess what? You have and you will continue to do so, as there's tons of these running around in the metro and other parts of the Philippines. If you think it looks like you're running the mill scooter, guess what? It is, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's decent, it doesn't look offensive, and it gets the job done. weighs in at only 93 kilograms on its own, making its handling in the city effortless, switching lanes, or making a U-turn is very easy, and the bike can change direction rather quickly. I am seated as 
I would be in a normal scooter, hands close to the knees and with my back straight up. The seat has indents to keep you from slipping as well as this durable feeling seat upholstery. It's also a bit grippy, which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. With gas prices hovering around the 50 pesos per liter range, expect to spend less than one peso per kilometer using this scooter. We averaged about 60 kilometers per liter on open roads. Now, when we hit heavy traffic, that dropped down to 50 kilometers per liter, which is still pretty damn good. Turning radius is also a high point for the beat, coupled with the weight of the bike, which makes it an exceptionally good seeing it machine. I'm talking about getting through traffic, not a stinky part of your body. But that's pretty much it though. Power is nothing substantial, just adequate for getting from point A to point B. A bona fide commuter scooter, if you will. Like most Hondas, the transmission is pretty smooth. Power delivery is linear and really perfect for in-city rides. However, for longer stints, I'd want more power to go with it. But for your quick trip around town and at less than one peso per kilometer, it's a bit of a no-brainer. This bike just gets the job done. Ride comfort in the Scoot is pretty good for what it's built for. With a soft suspension going over bumps on the road, not a problem at all. Like a lot of Honda's motorcycles, you get a side stand switch that shuts off the engine when deployed. It's not the fanciest and it's not the most well equipped, but at a price tag of 66,900 Philippine pesos, the Honda Beat 110 Street Standard does all the fundamentals well with excellent fuel economy and it's proudly Philippine made, which means servicing won't be an issue. And if you add 3,000 Philippine pesos, you get the combi braking system and the idling stop system. It's actually a great beginner's bike. So good that one of us actually purchased one. This exact one right here. This has been Gene Rafino. Hope you guys enjoyed going beyond the ride. Hey, Earl, come back!